As you can probably tell, today's gonna be a pretty build-heavy episode. I mean, getting in one house, a second house, and a cafe is already a pretty nuts start to an episode. But we're just getting started here today. Today is going to be a big one. I mean, it's not quite going to be a megasode, but it's it's pretty close. We need a we need a term for this. Uh a progressode, progress episode, progress so progr you know maybe i'll just leave the clever naming to you guys in the comment section below anyway in the last episode we created this sheep farm and as i mentioned in the last episode i really want to make a cliffside in this area in order to cover up the sheep farm and probably some other farms as well such as cow farms and such like that that just take up a lot of space here on the ground so just to recap, we're going to have a cliffside going across here. It's probably going to go up and then have a waterfall that is going to slowly trickle down here into the river. It's going to be a lot of work, so let's go ahead and get into it. So for you, it's been just a couple of seconds in order to build this entire cliffside. But for me, it's been around about a week. Although in that week, I didn't just work on this cliffside. That would be, that would be absolutely nuts. This cliffside took me about, I don't know, a couple hours to do. Uh, hello, zombie. How are you doing? You're coming to say hello. Okay, stay down there. I don't- Ow! You're not staying down there! Okay, abort mission. Abort- <laughs> Go away, zombie! <laughs> anyway, like I said, it took me a couple of hours in order to do this cliffside, and honestly, I think that it came out looking really, really good. It could probably leave- uh, use a little bit of texturing on the top a little bit, maybe adding in some more trees or something like that, but overall, I like it. I think that this was a good thing to add in to the area. I also have a path that goes around the back and up on top of the cliffside itself. However, like I said, it is a little bit plain up here right now, so could probably use some smaller trees dotted around here in the area just to kind of fill it in a little bit. But like I said, the cliffside is not the only thing that I did this week. Have you noticed it yet? Take a good look around the village. There's no more vines. All of the vines have been removed from the entire village. And this was a huge undertaking. Originally, I was just going to add some string to the bottom of the vines in order to stop them from growing down. But sadly, these vines are a menace. They are absolutely the worst thing in Minecraft to try and control. They grow upward, they grow to the side, they grow down, they grow diagonally. Okay, I don't know about diagonally, but I know they grow every single direction and they are a pain. If you have one vine anywhere, it will spread everywhere and it is just a massive pain. So I got rid of them. I just, I got rid of them and it was actually pretty easy. So as you can see, there are a few vines down here at the bottom of this tree that have spread a little bit, some leftover stuff, and they're actually incredibly easy to get rid of on large scale. I mean, it still takes a while whenever you have this much built, but if you just go to the top of a tree and dump a water bucket, bye-bye vines. They actually cannot survive water and they get deleted and that is how i got rid of all of the vines 
in this area of the jungle. I went up and down these trees using the vines, <laughs> kind of uh, ironic there. I used the vines to go up and down and destroy all of the vines in the jungle. And it took me several, several days to do this. That is, that is why this video is so incredibly late. But I do have to say that I quite like it without the vines. It looks a lot cleaner in that area and actually looks like something that people live in and keep up with. You wouldn't want vines in your face all the time if you were living in this area. So it makes sense that the villagers kind of got rid of all of that overgrowth in their own village. So I think it makes sense and I think it looks pretty good. Oh, but I'm not done. You think that that is what I did in a week? No, sir. No, sir. I did even more. So do you guys remember this area, our storage room that we placed in the middle of the jungle? And it kind of seemed like it didn't make sense at the time, but that's because we were going to build a massive jungle temple over top of this storage room. And ladies and gentlemen, I can proudly say that after about a four hour live stream, this area is cleared of the jungle itself and is ready for the temple to be put in place. Now, we still need to level out the land a little bit and get that in a better situation. But overall, all the jungle is pushed back and the build is ready to go in. But guess what? We're not done. Because if we head down here into our mining area, you will see that it is a lot, a lot bigger, a lot more dug out than it was. And that's because I've been collecting up materials for the jungle temple itself. We have ourselves a fair amount of stone already dug up and it is time for us to put it in use and actually make the jungle temple. However, that's a lot of progress that I just threw at you guys all at once. So I think I'm not going to uh, throw the jungle temple in this episode as well. That would be a little bit ridiculous. So uh, yeah, let's work on something else. So I want to take a minute to talk about one of my favorite things to do in Minecraft. Instant mining. And I mean, let's be honest, who doesn't love seeing blocks just absolutely evaporate in front of your face, giving you tons of materials to make more builds. However, this joy in my life has been ruined as of the 1.17 update by the addition of Deep Slate. Yeah, yeah, this really puts a hold on things. You can't just absolutely annihilate it like you can other blocks. It actually takes a moment, and that is rather annoying. I love my haste to mining, so I need to find a solution. And I think I have found a solution. Well, at least for me. You see, I actually need to obtain a ton of moss blocks in order to make mossy stone bricks for the jungle temple. And Deep Slate just so happens to be one of the blocks that can be converted by moss. So if I go ahead and place down a moss block, bone meal it, and then just bone meal this entire section of deep slate like this, I can actually take down an entire layer of deep slate with a hoe very, very quickly. <laughs> and it's all going away very easily. The only issue is ores. If I hit ores, it doesn't work, but I can also do it like this and like this, and I can spread it down. And dude, I can absolutely get rid of this deep slate and also get the moss blocks that I need for my build. It's kind of a win-win. It's kind of a win-win. Now this isn't a perfect solution by any means. You still have to take out the top layer of deep slate. That way you can actually spread the moss, but at least I don't have to mine as much of it. I can just kind of take out the top layer and then start growing moss and I can get rid of huge patches of deep slate very, very quickly. This is so much better. It really is. I mean, it's, it's nowhere near perfect. I would much rather have haste too and just be able to plow through the deep slate with haste too. But since that's not in the game, 
this will have to do. It is a solution. It's, it's not the greatest solution, but it is a solution nonetheless. I'm not gonna lie, whenever I do this, I kind of feel like I'm defeating my arch nemesis. <laughs> I've had I've had so many live streams where I've been mining through Deep Slate, and now that I've kind of put two and two together, and I'm doing this now, oh, it's so much better. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I, I just somehow found a cheat code to Minecraft 1.17. Is this a cheat code? I feel like it's a cheat code. I mean, it's... It's just so, so much faster. Look at this, look. Goodbye, all of this deep slate. You just gotta keep a single moss block and some bone meal on you and there you go. You can, you can re remove huge patches of it. I'm full on moss though. That, that is an issue. You, you kind of take out these patches a little bit too quickly. And I'll probably make an actual moss farm in the future for this world. However, right now I already need to get rid of all of this deep slate that's in my mine just so that I have an easier time when I come strip mining. So this is a win. However, there are benefits to having a uh, moss block farm in the future. So this is probably something that I won't do for forever, but, but it, it's still nice. I still feel like I found a cheat code. <laughs> Some of you guys watching this probably don't even know what a cheat code is. It's, it's an old video game thing where you entered in a code and you got cheats. I feel old. I feel old that I have to explain this. Some of you guys are bound to know what a cheat code is, right? Right? Where's all my N64 players at? Come on, somebody out there has to know what a cheat code is. Only 90s kids will understand, I guess. So you remember when I said I would need to make a moss farm in the future? Well, the future's now. Because I've been looking through the material list for the jungle temple and we're going to need five shulker boxes of mossy stone bricks. I've done three of them just down here in the strip mine, but I gotta finish off this one and do another one and well, to be honest with you, I'm just tired of doing it down here. So it's time for a farm. So I think that I'm going to place this farm just opposite of the stone generator on the other side of our storage system. However, this one's gonna be a lot bigger than the stone farm. There's a lot more moving parts to this one. And there we go, that is the moss farm now in place. And I'm not even gonna pretend like I understand this design at all. This is actually a design by Rayworks and it is incredibly, incredibly smart. However, he is using some redstone here that I don't quite understand. I mean, I get the gist of it, but anytime somebody uses a target block, I'm, I'm very confused. I don't understand what this thing does. But for the most part, I do kind of get what's going on here. Basically, what we have down here at the bottom is a redstone clock that is going around activating this piston, which is going to push over this observer and power this line of pistons right here. This line of pistons is going to be what pushes up the stone in the place of these other pistons. So stone's gonna be pushed up and then these pistons are gonna fire and push the stone over. On top of that water down there, we also have lava going down on top, which is what makes the stone actually form. Around the back here, once those pistons fire, it comes through here on a one tick delay that these pistons are going to push over and across this way and fill in all of the gaps where the moss are. So here is where things get a little bit magic-y to me because I don't quite understand everything that's going on in this upper system. So first off, you have this target block, which I'm assuming just gives a very short redstone pulse whenever it is powered. That goes into this piston, which pushes that observer up, which is going to power up top to this redstone line that we have up here. So if we go ahead and head up, you will see we got redstone coming into a block that powers this piston. This piston pushes over this observer, which powers this piston, which pushes out that redstone block on a one tick pulse, and it spits out the redstone block here to power this power line and open up these trap doors and flush off all of the grass, all of the azalea bushes, all of that stuff out of the way very, very nicely. Then you have this piston down here that gets powered on the 
retraction of this observer and that piston is what knocks off the grass or moss or anything like that that spawns on top of this moss block and that makes it to where this moss block can continue to be bone milled because if there's something on top of the moss block it can't be bone milled this top block has to be cleared off so that pushes that off and then this is just a dispenser with bone meal that's going to bone meal the moss block itself and that is getting powered uh i guess that's getting powered also from when that piston goes off i'm not entirely sure i'm assuming this has got to be some type of quasi connectivity i'm I don't know. I really don't. I don't understand how that dispenser is getting powered down there, but it works. I promise you the whole thing works. It's very, very odd, but it, it works. Now the genius part about this farm is actually that whenever all of those carpets, moss blocks, everything is popped off, it's going to be flushed over into this water stream and then brought over into a bubble column and brought up to the top of the farm over into here. Now from this hopper, it's going to go into this chest. Now from this chest, things are going to split two different directions. First off, this hopper is going to take items first. This one has priority over this hopper. So it's going to dump out into this dump into this composter and this composter is going to constantly feed bone meal into this dropper. Now this is a completely self-sustaining bone meal farm for that dispenser, which means I never have to fill this thing up. It's going to make its own bone meal. And then anything that is not being used to make bone meal comes right over here and is extra for me to use. So all of these moss blocks, azalea bushes, everything that we need is gonna end up in here. And it's actually very, very sustainable. And I quite like it, I really do. We can also change this out from the moss block setting, from the moss block and basically the collection setting into a bone meal setting. I just break off this hopper here and I can point it straight down into this composter and this chest will fill up with bone meal. So that's kind of a basic explanation. I'm not the, the perfect person to explain the magic that's going on here. I will link down to Rayworks' video in the description below because I, he, he does a much better job. I'm just gonna be honest. I'm a builder and that means that I only know enough redstone to get myself into trouble. But anyway, ladies and gents, today has been a super, super productive episode. And honestly, I'm I'm super excited for the next one because in the next episode, we're going to be working on the jungle temple. The whole thing is gonna be built and I'm excited for it. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be where I wrap up for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. You guys have a great day.